So lately there's been a lot of talk in the melee community about wobbling and whether or not it should be banned from competitive play. Now if by some miracle you've managed to find this video and you don't know what wobbling is, it's essentially an infinite combo that's available to the ice climbers that allows them to delete an opponent's stock off of one grab. Needless to say, it's a pretty strong mechanic, and it elicits a pretty strong reaction from a lot of players, and recently it was decided by a few tournament organizers that wobbling would no longer be allowed at their tournaments. Even the Canadian Major Get On My Level 2019 has implemented this rule, which has led to a situation where the rules are no longer consistent across all tournaments, which itself provides its own issues. There are a number of angles that the players are discussing the issue from, and while it's been interesting to see the conversation develop, I've come up with my own thoughts on wobbling. Today I'm going to look at some of the arguments and counter-arguments for and against wobbling, as well as providing my own perspective on the issue. One of the first points I see brought up by those who support the ban is that wobbling affects viewership in a negative way, turning away an audience because watching wobbling is seen as boring by some. The Crimson Blur pointed out in his rant on the topic that there are no tangible numbers to back this claim up. But even if there was an argument to be made that viewership should dictate the competitive rule set, there's been no evidence suggesting a decline in viewers during wobbling, at least as far as I've seen, and until there is, I'm inclined to say that it's not a legitimate reason for a ban. On the other side of the argument, those who oppose the ban claim that the Ice Climbers are not competitively viable without this mechanic. There may be some merit to this point, maybe not in terms of total viability, but just overall strength, as it's pretty likely that a character is going to suffer if you take away their strongest tool. However, some argue that Ice Climbers would be fine without wobbling, noting that the character still has strong handoff combos that aren't guaranteed but still have zero to death potential in the right hands. It's even pointed out that the character's meta has mostly stagnated as a result of revolving their gameplay around finding the wobble setup, and it would serve the character well if players were forced to explore outside of that one mechanic. Now I personally think that if a mechanic is perceived as broken enough to be considered for a ban, then the alternative strategies aren't going to be quite as strong. But regardless of whether or not the character would remain viable or strong, I think this line of reasoning is flawed. I don't think that a character's strength should define whether or not a mechanic is legal if that mechanic is proven to be detrimental to the game. In my opinion, the mechanic should be looked at outside of the context of the character's place in the tier list. I mean, if there was a technique discovered that brought Zelda into viability but was also proven to be game-breaking, her sudden jump in the tier list wouldn't be a reason to legalize that broken mechanic. A similar line of argument is that because the Ice Climbers aren't winning majors, then wobbling can't be that strong. There are two issues with this sentiment though. The first counterpoint that is usually brought up is that wobbling creates an unbelievable possibility for upsets at the top levels of play, with players placing much higher than their perceived skill level by knocking out strong opponents with wobbling. And personally, I think it's hard to deny at this point. Although there are no exact statistics for how an Ice Climbers player might place without wobbling, there are a number of instances of Ice Climbers defeating players ranked much higher than them, with some top players really struggling with the matchup. Of course, the common criticism here is that these players should get good. Don't get grabbed, dude. Now, the second issue with the notion that wobbling isn't a problem due to Icy's not winning majors is that the lower levels and mid levels of play are the ones that suffer the most. The technique is such a powerful tool that it essentially invalidates any players that don't know how to navigate around it. Now, the counterpoint here is that many techniques are strong at lower levels and wobbling shouldn't be banned based on this criteria, and I think that's a fair judgment. Another point from those who want wobbling banned is that there is an imbalance between the mechanic's low skill floor and the massive reward for a successful wobble. Now I might agree that the technique is too easy for how much of a reward there is, but this is another point that I think is difficult to quantify. It's a slippery slope of judging and banning techniques based off their perceived ease of use and skewed risk reward factor, and there are many chain grabs that players might argue are just as easy, and then the question of whether or not those should be banned could be raised. Now before I say why I believe wobbling should be banned, I want to point out that I have no bad feelings towards Icy's and Ice Climbers players. I actually think they have the potential to be the coolest character in the game, with my favorite melee combo of all time being this one. You can't escape! You can't escape! You can't! You do being able to control two characters like this is pretty nuts, and I have the utmost respect for those who can do it. But ultimately, the way I look at wobbling is how it affects the gameplay at a fundamental level, and the point I'm going to make is one I've seen every so often, but it's brought up less than I might expect. 
One of the aspects of wobbling that I think needs to be taken into consideration is that it completely eliminates one of the core mechanics of melee that really sets it apart from other fighting games, and that's DI and SDI. What separates wobbling from chain grabs and tech chases is that it removes the ability for the opponent to influence whether or not the combo continues. Some might argue that a good player can still react to DI and tech mix-ups, and while that's true, the important distinction to make is that the player getting comboed is still making decisions during the combo. They are an active participant in the game with the opportunity to escape through smart decision making. Wobbling, besides the chance to mash out of the grab, denies the opponent the ability to even participate in the game. Instead, stocks are taken while the other player getting wobbled sits and waits for the wobble to end. This isn't a situation where the ICs need to respect any DI or wake up options from the opponent because there's no chance for those options. The stock is virtually gone once the wobble is initiated. I decided to look at several instances of wobbling to gauge the average time between the wobble and the stock taken, and I found that at around mid percents, the ICs typically take around 15 seconds per wobble. And now, it might not seem like a lot, but that's 15 seconds of a player not participating in the game for one single wobble. I support the ban on wobbling because it eliminates the opponent's opportunity to even play the game. Now, some might argue that combos in games like Street Fighter can leave an opponent stunned and unable to act, but as far as I'm aware, there are no true combos that lead to stun without the opponent having an opportunity for a wake-up mix-up and defense in general, especially ones that are started off an unblockable attack. Wobbling, on the other hand, is a low-risk mechanic that strips the opponent of any autonomy during the infinite, and I think this is really detrimental to the health of the game. Other zero to deaths can be frustrating, but at least the victim can make decisions and have a fighting chance in escaping, which is why I think wobbling is unhealthy for the game. But of course, that's just what I find to be the most persuasive criteria, and if you disagree, I'd be happy to know why, so let me know. But until next time, later days.